Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about using the reduce functionality in the streams API. Before we go to the implementation of the reduce functionality, let us understand why do we need it and how the constructs of the reduce functionality work. So let's understand first about the requirement. Why do we need it? So imagine a requirement where you have a list of numbers and you are asked to calculate the sum of all the elements inside the list. A very straightforward requirement that you have a collection and you are asked to calculate the sum of all the elements of the collection. Now, if you do not use the streams API, you can go ahead and very well write a complex for each logic or an enhanced for loop logic to basically run that code and write the logic where you pick one element or all the elements one by one and keep adding them to the new element. But we can do the same kind of thing by using the reduce method. And to put it in a generic way, if we have to understand why we need reduce methods. So whenever you have to change the whole collection representation into a single result, remember that line, whenever you have to change the representation of the complete collection into a single result, in those cases, you will use the reduce method of the streams API. And if you apply this definition to the example I gave you, I have a collection of numbers and I want to calculate the sum of all the elements of this collection, which is a single result, which is a single number. So yes, my example does apply correctly to the generic definition of the reduce method. So remember this generic definition, this will help you understand when to use the, uh, the reduce method in your program. So how does the reduce method work? You can see I have shown you an example of the syntax of the reduce method and it looks a bit complex here. So let's try to understand what is happening here. To understand the functionality of the reduce method, we have to understand three terms, which are identity, accumulator, and a combiner. Let's understand each of them one by one. Identity is basically an element, which is the default or the initial value of the reduction operation. This value will be used if the stream itself is empty or it will be used as the first value of the result which you want to get out eventually. So in this case, if I have to summate all the elements of a collection, the initial value can be set as zero. And that is the first thing which you have to pass inside the reduce method. So you can see zero here. The next thing is the accumulator. So accumulator is a function which will take two parameters. The first parameter would be the ongoing partial result. Let's say if you have to calculate the sum of the all elements and let's say if you have iterated two elements so far. So the sum of those two elements is your temporary or partial result, right? So you need to store that partial result somewhere. And that is the first argument of the accumulator method. In this case, it is this variable which is shorthanded as ANS or answer. So the first argument is the partial result. And the second argument of the accumulator function is the next element of the stream. So whatever the next element is, which is supposed to be added to the existing result is going to be the next argument of the accumulator function, which is I in this case. So we talked about the identity. We talked about about the accumulator function. Then we have a third one, which is called combiner. And this is sort of an optional, not in all cases, but in, in some cases it is optional. Let's understand why do we need combiner. So combiner is an optional function which you will be required to use if you want to sum the two elements which do not have the same data type. What I mean is here this ANS or answer and I both are integer. If both of the arguments of your accumulator function are of the same data type, you do not need a combiner and that's why there is no combiner here. But if there is a requirement where you are, let's say, adding a, a, a current sum to a student object, then it doesn't work, right? Because a student object is a custom object and the current sum is a, a number object. So a student object cannot be just added to a number object. It can work if you can do student.getAge, which is a number object. So a current answer plus the student.getAge might work, but current answer comma student will not work. In those cases where you have mismatching data types, in those cases you will have to write a combiner function. But for this case, you don't need to write a combiner function because both of the 
elements or the arguments of the accumulator function are of the same data type. So you specify that argument function, uh, functions arguments basically, and then you provide the implementation of the accumulator function, which is this one. This is the implementation again using a lambda construct here. So you provide the implementation of this particular accumulator function and then there is no comma here to provide further com combiner functions specifications. So there's no combiner here. If there was a combiner, there would be a comma here and then you will write the combiner specification where you will cast the current object into the type which is the same as the partial result. So you don't need that here and you can just say the partial result plus the current element and that should work fine. So this is how you will write the reduce logic and if you have written this logic correctly then it should automatically just summate all the elements one by one and produce a single result. And remember I'm using the numbers list here which is written here in the very beginning where I have four elements to it which are 10, 20, 30 and 40. So if the reduce operation works fine with, the, with my intended objective then 40 plus 30 which is 70 plus 20 is 90 plus 10 is 100 so I should get the 100 as the as the final result of this reduce operation. You will also notice that after this particular method you don't need to call any collector method or, or any collect method at all. The reason is because this particular function itself will return a single result which we can store in the desired variable. So now let's try to run this particular example and see the output. So right click run as Java application and I get the result as 100 which is coming from this particular sysout where I'm printing the sum. So yes, this is working as per our expectation where it basically created the sum of all the elements of this particular collection. So remember when you will use the reduce operation, remember the generic definition, whenever you have to convert the whole collection into a single result, that would be the use case where you will use the reduce operation. That's one thing. Remember the identity operators definition, Remember the how the accumulator function works and also remember when to use the combiner function. A reminder of when to use the combiner function is whenever you have these two arguments of different data types. That would be the use case where you would need to write a combiner function. It is also used if you have to write parallel streams. But parallel streams is an advanced concept which we are not covering in this particular tutorial. But if you want to learn about the, the whole parallel stream concept, do check out the API docs for that and you can also have a look at some examples from the Java tutorial official website itself. And that's all I want to cover in today's session. In the next session, we are going to talk about the access modifiers in Java. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please do not forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.